Hi guys, welcome to my fourth tutorial on C Sharp, WPF, and Model View View Model. Um, we're going to go ahead this time and we're going to set up some private fields, some public properties, and we're going to set up um, our property event handler. Now, if you remember the last tutorial, we set up our UI. So now what we're going to do is set up our view model. So basically, this is our view, and now we want to be able to view the data that we want in our view, so we're going to have a view model. So let's go ahead and right click on view model. We're going to go ahead and add a class. And basically this class is just going to be a city view model. I mean it's it's that simple. We can go ahead and hit add. So now what it does is it sets up our city view model class. Now we want to make our class public. So it was public class city view model. Now, because we're going to be using properties, we need the way to process um, those events. So basically, we want to go ahead and proper process any property that we have. So we want to use, let's go ahead and do a colon here, and I, notify, that's going to be a capital N. So I notify property changed and it's going to underline of course because it's not going to know where it is but we can resolve it and we're just going to be using system component models so by right clicking and resolving it adds the reference to the component model in the system up here. So now before we build our fields or we build our public property what we want to do is have a way to process any on property changes that we call so every time the property changes we want to go through and look and register and handle that event so let's go ahead and create a region we can use pound or hashtag depends on what school of thought you are from and this is going to be an I I'm going to go with capital N here notify you can name these whatever you want but I try to stay consistent so basically it's me, I notify property change members. So basically, basically we're just creating a collapsible region. So if we don't need to work with this data anymore and we know that this code is set and we don't ever need to touch it, we can just collapse it and I ever have to look at it again. So basically it gives you this little collapsible region. So inside here, this is where we're going to go ahead and create our event in a way to process that event. So we're going to have a public event. Now I'm not doing a whole tutorial on events so you know if you want to learn more about events just google it um, and it should come up. So we're going to have property change event handler which is right here. Just use IntelliSense as much as possible and then we're going to call it property property change. So that's our event. So property change is our event and now we're going to have a method. So it's going to be a public, it's going to be a void, we're not returning anything. And the method is going to be called on property changed. Now this is what we're going to call inside our public property. And if this doesn't all make sense it will in a minute so just bear with me. So we're passing in as a parameter a string and basically that's just going to be a property name so, so now I lost my other bra bracket there but okay now we have our curly brace and now let's go ahead and we want to make sure it's not equal to null that way we don't get an error so if oh, I said it, I hit insert um, I do that sometimes I don't know why big fat fingers on a keyboard I guess so we're going to say if property changed is not equal to null, and if property changed, we want to say this property, so basically this property that we're passing in, and then we're going to say new, will be property changed event args, and then our argument is going to be the property name. So this sets up our event. So here's our event. 
here's our method so in our public property we're going to call this method pass in whatever the string is that string is going to be passed to property changed so it's going to pass the string and register the event so basically whatever like we'll have a public string city ID and that ID we're going to pass to this method and this method is going to go ahead and say it's a new event of property change and basically whatever the property name is so that registers our event for us so now let's go ahead and we're going to create a new region and this one's going to be called fields now these are going to be all the fields that we need for this class so they're going to be private because we don't want to we want to make our class self-contained so then we want to protect that data that we're creating so it's going to be private string and then it's going to be city ID so now what we can do is if we want to save on typing we can copy this not the whole thing but the first part just paste it because then we know we're going to have a city name and we can paste it again then we know we're we'll be able to process all of our data so we're going to have a city population and all this does is saves us time and I didn't know what I was clicked on there but it wasn't working and I don't even have city so that works for us huh We're going to have a city type. City wealth. We're going to have city history. And then our last one's not going to be a string, it's going to be an int. And basically, that's nice. Basically, this integer is going to be our, our random city. This is what's going to generate a random city out of our list of random cities. So, this is actually not a property, but this is actually, um, well, it's not going to be part of a property. It's going to be part of a method later on. So, we'll be able to set our random city and pass it around and, and look at it. So, now that we have all our fields that we're going to need, let's go ahead and create the properties region. So here we go. This is going to be properties. And now what we want to do, when you create a property, it's going to be public. That way we can access it from other classes still be a string because that's what we're using as our data type data type of string but it's going to be a city ID we're going to have a set of curly braces now if we get that we're going to have a getter and a setter so basically we're going to return our private city ID and then we can go ahead and set our city ID. So all we want to do is our private city ID is going to equal our value, so whatever value we set it to. And then this is where the on property chain comes in. So basically we're going to call this that method we created. And basically we're passing it a string, remember, so we can pass it city ID. I mean, I guess you know, you could change it so instead of a string you could pass it you know an integer or whatever but you know you want to pass it a string it's it's easier it's how it's already set up I mean you could change the parameter I mean I don't see why that would be an issue it's just you're going to have to go through and make sure all the data that's being processed is proper and you check it but back to what we're working on so here's our public string for our property city ID now we can return the city ID so whatever is in the city ID will return back to whatever's bound to this or whatever's calling it 
and then when we set it we're going to call the method so we're going to register the on property change notification so we're going to register this event so as we call it it goes through passes it passes in the property name the property name gets registered with our event handler that's it I mean that's that whole setup so So now here's the rest of our the rest of our properties already set up. So yeah, we have city ID, city name, city population, city type, city wealth, city history. Now you can see they all kind of follow the same method, but you could actually put an if statement in the setter or even in the getter. So you could Go ahead and verify more data if you had a lot more going on and more information you could say you know if you know city history is less than five you know then you can go ahead and return the value and on property change so you know you can react more on the data if you need to process it a certain way but for us this is how it's going to work so we've set up our our property change event handler we've set up our properties in our fields in the next tutorial, we're going to go ahead and bind these properties to our text boxes. So I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.